Oh, this Alan Oyama is so controversial. <laughs> That's what some of you will be saying in your mind. I'm not. I only try to speak the truth. I don't want to bore you about the preambles to what I want to say today because they've said a lot about that. Let me even start from where they stopped. Airlines in Nigeria have been blamed for posting poor performances, delays, cancellations. Recently, the NCAA came out with their assessment of the situation without telling the world what caused those cancellations and what caused those delays placing airlines, their own airlines, in a position that is very, very unfair. Because you would expect, when you say airlines canceled 30 flights, you should also state, give them the headings. This one, 20% of the cancellations came as a result of weather. The other one came as a result of VIP movement. The other one came as a result of death strike. Nobody said that. When we talk about delays, is it the duty of the airlines to chase wildlife? No. Airpeace alone, this year alone, has had about 18 bed strikes. You know what that means to the operations of an airline? 18 bed strikes. It was the best strike that took out an aircraft and dished into the Hudson River in the United States. But we thank God Almighty, we never had any incident caused by bed strikes. But it's something very serious. One airline alone, 18. The year is not finished. And we're talking about Airlines posting delays. When one happens, each aircraft is supposed to do about eight or seven flights in a day. Once it happens, assuming you are doing your first flight or second flight, it will be very difficult to recover from that to do the other flights on time. So when we are criticizing Nigerian airlines and delays and cancellations, we must look at it and tell ourselves the truth. What are the things causing it? I've just mentioned best strike. In fact, there was a day we had two best strikes in one station in Benin. Our airbus landed with a best strike. Our E2 went in to rescue passengers. Another best strike. They said the birds were migrating that evening. What would any airline do in that stead? Is it the duty of the airlines to chase wildlife? Whose duty it is to chase wildlife? How about the engines? The E2, we, we imported brand new plane in Asaba. Best strike hit one of the engines. And it, took, it cost us $3 million. I'm not saying this for saying sake. You can find out. It didn't go into the core of the engine, just those the silver linings. I didn't know the front part of the dynamic, of the uh, aerodynamics of the aircraft. To change it, it cost us about $3.2 million in one day but before you even get to that that aircraft was lying down for another one week because the manufacturers didn't envisage that such thing could happen immediately those are not the things they were expecting you have to pack whenever it happens you ground your planes you reduce your capacity and already this things had already been scheduled how about the congestions at the airports Take a trip to the Abuja airport and see for yourself. When Senator Adede was talking, he's talking about autonomy. But you find out that these agencies of government and their MDs or DGs are being hoodwinked in one way or the other by the supervising ministries. And it does not help anything at all. Take a trip to Abuja and see for yourself. Once you leave Lagos in the morning, at the peak time of Abuja, about eight airlines. We are dumped in one small room like this with everybody, two, two counters to, it, to each, each airline for, for, for checking. You don't even know who is going to Kano, who is going to where. If I post the video here, you will cry. So your plane lands, sometimes don't even see a place to park. You take time for the plane to park. When eventually you park, you will call for boarding. People going to 12 o'clock, maybe it's five minutes to 12, you call for 12 o'clock boarding time. Before they finish boarding, is another maybe around 1.30 because people are still checking in. People don't look at this. At the end of the day, you've lost about one hour because of the Abuja airport during peak time. You can never recover. 
And of course, not all the airports could fly at night. So what you now do as an airline, you try to sacrifice Kano, Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt, and rescue those sunset airports first. While you're doing that, these, four, these other four uh, uh, airline, uh, airports that you could fly into at night, we suffer, their passengers will suffer. The airlines are blamed. How about passenger education? Some of the problems we are having also are caused by the, the way we run operations in Nigeria. We need to speak the truth. Let us tell Nigerians that we are also contributing to the delays. Let me tell you how. This is called scheduled operations. When you leave this country and go elsewhere, if you have eight o'clock flight from Atlanta to Miami, you have nine o'clock to Atlanta to Miami, 10 o'clock from Atlanta to Miami. If your eight o'clock is disturbed by whatever reason, it does not have to stop the nine o'clock to Miami and 10 o'clock to Miami flights. It's not so in Nigeria. Weather could stop you from executing a particular operation. Maybe you are in Benin, there's been raining cats and dogs, planes couldn't land in Benin, and at the end of the day, you cancel the Benin flight for that day, maybe in the evening, coming to Lagos. The Benin will tell you that the first thing you will do in the morning is to come and take them. It is not done like that. What is done is that you tell the passengers, please reschedule to the next available uh, 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 operations. That's how it is done. You dare not do that. If you do that, they will come to the airport and fight you and say, yeah, they were supposed to fight yesterday. Even if they are not flying yesterday, was not the fault of the airline. They will force you and the airport authorities, they will, they will keep hands like Kimbo watching them and they'll do this. It's only in Nigeria that you see passengers going almost to the aircraft to stop a moving plane because it was their, time, their turn. They try to do it at times. So we need to educate passengers also. And airlines, because we know all this, when it happens, you don't tell them, oh, reschedule. You prepare to disrupt your flight in the morning to go and rescue somebody whose schedule had already been dis dis disrupted by nature. Once you are doing that, you're disrupt disrupting more flights in the day. At the end of the day, it's the airlines we know. So we really need... Like a guy used, as you know, they said overhaul. I think the world is overhaul, total overhaul. We have to overhaul the airlines, overhaul the passengers themselves, overhaul the agencies. If possible, government should overhaul their policies. Because what passengers do in Nigeria is unbearable. Things they cannot do, even in Kotonou, they do it here. Somebody with watching pornographic film and they call for boarding. He wouldn't stand up to go on board. As at the time... The plane is landing in Abuja. He will not remember that, oh, I'm going to Abuja. When he gets to that place to say, oh, you people have started delaying again. This Abuja flight, no go call him. Oh, your flight is already in Abuja. He will start destroying the computers, beating other people's children, other people's wives, other people's husbands, other people's brothers and sisters. And people are watching. How The question is, how did over 170 other people bought that aircraft? Beating them, saying that they didn't make any announcement. How did the others who flew bought the aircraft and you are the only one? And at the end of the day, the person is not charged to court. So the next day, another person does the same thing. Even we have found whether they to even make arrests, they will use social media to attack both fans and the airline and say all sorts of things. So we need total education. I think the airlines should also contribute. I've said it times with that number that we are ready to contribute to that awareness being created. We have to do that. The airport facilities, in the morning you want to take off from Lagos, you have a 6.30 flight, you get to the threshold, you wait for, once an aircraft crosses the lorry, in Nigeria you have to wait. I'm happy the president of the air traffic controller is able here. Once they pass the lorry, you have to wait. Other climbs I used to see in here in a Heathrow, as one is landing, another one, this is what they do. So the time it takes for us to execute is also another problem. And when you lose any time, you've lost it. It's the airline that is blamed. It's only in Nigeria that labor unions storm such a sacred place like airports to disrupt operations. It doesn't happen anywhere. It doesn't happen anyway, because one of these days, 
I pray that this does not lead to accident. A situation where people who are agitating for one thing or the other have access to the air sides because they belong to union. Because one of these days, they will throw a spanner into one of the engines and what you get is air crash. Nigeria should avoid allowing unionism in aviation. They should avoid it if they have to do it. If they have to do it, they will do it in such a way that the airport side is, is kept sacred. It is not good. It's scary. It is scary. I'm telling you, it is scary. I'm not against it's their right to belong to union. It's the right of everybody to do unionism. But, but there's a limit to some stupidity. Yes, the other day, they had problems with the state government. And APC was being attacked, Abuja, Lagos, and over oh, I mean, what kind of thing is that? What is my problem with that? What is our problem with that? So the unions should also, there should be union reforms. If not, if not, one of these days, what you, the result and effects of this might be catastrophic. And you don't force people to, to join you. I have freedom to decide if I'm to join you or not. So there should be reforms. The reforms are even there in the laws. But, but people are applying the laws to suit themselves. They pick the side that will suit them and look at it as if it is by force that everybody must belong to a union. I can't decide not to be part of you. You don't force me. For example, in APIS, I promise that we will do something for them to alleviate their sufferings because of the uh, subsidy remover. Ask them what happened on the 28th of this month. Salaries were increased, but even fueling. The fuel vendor, their drivers play pranks at times. Sometimes you're not being fueled. Sometimes you get to the airport in the morning because of a lack of space. The parking is haphazard because the markings could not take the number of planes there. I've seen my aircraft having boarded passengers around 6.30 and remained on the same spot for another one hour. We are waiting for our brother Eric to come and move their plane. But I think uh, uh, Fan has sorted uh, that out. But it happened. It was happening before. Sometimes VIP movement could cost you some one, two hours and you're not allowed to say it. It's the airline that will carry the flag. So these issues of delays, we have to tell the truth. So it's unfair for NCA not to have added what caused those delays. They should bring statistics. This one's by uh, delays caused by nature. This one by the airline, maybe the technical hitches. Safety is the key thing. But blaming the airlines outrightly without letting the public know the things that are passing through is not fair on the airlines. Then you talk about BASA. The past minister came on television and said that he gave a piece um, all the designations. One is to give you designation. Another thing is for government to truthfully support you. When Delta Airlines started operations into Nigeria, as they were coming to Nigeria, all most top government officials of the United States followed them to Nigeria. When you designate your airline to do, to fly your flag outside the country, you must give commensurate support too, not lip service. So when you give me, give me all the designations in this world and you don't truthfully support me, there's nothing I can do. The international aeropolitics will swallow you as an airline. And this is what is happening to Nigerian airlines. When they say Nigerian airlines don't have capacity, let me say this. What we don't have is the right support. These owners of airlines have succeeded in other businesses before they came to aviation. Aviation is not their first call. And nobody wants to fail. Nobody wants to fail. Granted that some people might do some other things, but nobody really wants to fail. You gave me London. Why is APIS not flying London? APIS flies to China on Wednesdays. China is about 13 hours going. Coming back, you do 14 hours. We do twice to India every week. We do South Africa twice. 
we've started Jeddah and Medina. So what, why are we being stopped from going to London? Who is stopping us? Six hours flights, the piece of cake for the kind of equipment we've got. So who was stopping us? You gave us designation to go to London. We applied to go to London. When the TCO uh, uh, people contacted you, you denied us. What reason? Oh, Eric failed. Uh, made you fail. And so what? And so what? Oh, we don't want you to fail the TCO. Is it a matter of failing the TCO? They will give you, if you, there are any gap, they'll tell you the gap to, to close it. You close it. It's not about uh, question and answer in first, and that is the end of the day. You close the gap. They stopped us for four years from applying. Yet we brought three triple sevens, a beautiful three triple sevens, and packed. We couldn't go until Captain Musa knew Nan said enough is enough. and pushed it through for us to apply. But the people over there already knew that we don't have support here. So they treat you anyhow. They wrote epics telling us, please stop writing us when we are ready, we'll tell you. Meanwhile, they're doing 21 frequencies into my country. As I speak to you, as I speak to you, they've not contacted us in the last five, in the last three months. Since last year, we've been doing this. They're still coming to Nigeria. You expect your government to well in immediately and tell them enough is enough. All of them are crying about uh, their own repatriated funds. Let us be patriotic for once. They are not repatriating their funds. Why are they not? They are not repatriating their funds and they are increasing their frequencies into Nigeria. If you know and realize that Nigeria will not give you your money back, why are you increasing your frequencies? Why are you not allowing Nigerian Airlines to come, to go to your own country? I can't understand this country called Nigeria. It's just an unfair place. It's just an unfair place. And that is the truth. Very unfair. Sometimes I wish for this country. It's such an unfair place. A peace has been unfairly treated. And I have to say it everywhere. Highly unfairly treated. Maybe the plan of those in power was to see the airline go down. Maybe that was the plan, to see the airline go down, go extinct, and they'll count it as one of those that came, also ran. But God Almighty will not allow that. Tell me what is in England, six hours flight. If we could do China, do India successfully, steadily. So what, we, APIS, we don't have capacity. We've flown for foreign governments. During the in COVID, the foreign governments, they realized the capacity in APIS and asked us to fly their citizens. Israelis don't play games. But they had APIS to be the only airline flying their citizens back to their country during the uh, 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 COVID. We did that. We flew Chinese government officials for them from here beyond Beijing, nonstop. And came back. Yet in your country, you're, Everything is being pulled to make sure you're down. It's an unfair country. Let them close it down if they like. It's an unfair country. It pains me that Nigerians are paying over 2 million naira as economy ticket to fly a six hour flight to London. The same Nigerians will find their ways to Accra and buy it cheaper there. Yet your own airline that would have taken about 700,000 to go there is not being encouraged, not being supported to do that. Meanwhile, we have the equipment to do it daily. We have the, the money to do it, I mean the equipment to do it daily. And save foreign exchange for this country. And save foreign exchange for this country. But we're not being allowed. How could UK be telling you, oh, uh, we'll get back to you later. We've applied for slots. The moment nobody's answering you, please don't be writing us. We write you when we want to. This is the kind of mails we receive because nobody is supporting you. Because nobody is supporting you. You don't give somebody designation 
Your airline is, for God's sake, your airline is flying your, your flag. It ceases to become airpiece as the moment, or it ceases to become max air, the moment you, you're going abroad for your country. Your country must give you all the support. The embassies will be there to support you. You must do that. The government, the minister, all of them, they must will the power of government. If not so, nobody is giving you that. Meanwhile, they lay red carpet for the foreign airlines into Nigeria. So part of the reforms, government must review this BASA. Government must enforce reciprocity before they start talking about repatriation of funds. Ethiopia knows, Ethiopia knows that their money is stuck here. But Ethiopia has Kano, Portakot, Enugu, Kaduna, Abuja, Lagos. If you leave them, they will even fire flight to Oshodi. So then what, what is it all about? You give them red carpet, and when you talk, the minister will tell you uh, it is good for the nation. I am flying Mumbai. APs goes to Mumbai. We applied to India to also give us Delhi. Like, never. If you want it, use your own airline, your own local airline. Every country protects its own. America with all its economic might. You cannot even, uh, Senator Adele cannot take his private jet into America and hop into more than two places. Maybe you land in New York, refuel, you land another place, you remain, that aircraft will remain there. You start using this ordinary private jet, oh, you start using their own, this, whatever you want to go back, you go back from how you came. Not to talk of commercial scheduled operations, allowing you to hop from Potako to Abuja to Lagos, then back to your country. Where is that done? How do you protect your reserves? How do you protect your own economy? How do you protect your indigenous airlines? How do you protect them? They say Nigerian airlines, no capacity, no capacity. How would they have capacity when they are being decimated through government policies? So the first reform will be to address the issue of BASA. We need to revisit BASA. We need to ban multi-city hopping. Multi-city hopping of foreign airlines. That needs to stop with immediate effect. You see, I'm the vice president of AON. We discuss with members. All I'm telling you here, every member is feeling so bad, feeling so discouraged. All we get is all these discouraging statements. We feel so discouraged. We are not being supported. As at times, you come and start comparing us to people who are receiving their loans with 2% interest, 2% and easily given. So like the past two speakers said, we call on government to support the indigenous carriers genuinely and they will make this country very proud. All those conditions, you wanted to uh, uh, place on a platter of gold for Ethiopia to come and operate in our country. Give it your own indigenous airlines and see what they will do. If you look at the um, outline business case that submitted, they recognized in that document all this multiple taxation. It is their document. And they asked that it should be removed for them. They recognized financing and also asked that the federal government of Nigeria should and must guarantee and indemnify all their liabilities and loans inside that same document. Who is giving the airlines? And also asked for 15 years tax holiday. That's what was submitted. We now went to court. 
We now went to court. So if you realize that such conditions were the debilitating factors mitigating against the ease of doing business by these local operators, why didn't you remove it for them? Why are you now reserving it for a foreign carrier in the name of a national carrier? Why are you doing that? So we went to court because of this. The truth is, let us not fool ourselves. Countries don't do national carrier anymore. National carrier is a very moribund idea and entity. Countries don't go that way. For anybody to come and fool us in 2023 to tell us that what Nigeria needs is a national carrier, is a lie. What you need are flag carriers. America, with all its aviation might, with all its economic might, does not have a national carrier. National carrier connotes government ownership. What they have are flag carriers. The deltas of this world are flag carriers. Even British Airways, all the Air France and all of them. They used to be, those ones used to be, but they're no longer national carriers. These are private businesses. Why should Nigeria be going backwards in everything? Why? And they sell the idea to everybody that this is what we need. It is a lie. And this national carrier, the way it was being propounded, would have killed all the airlines in Nigeria, would have decimated the workforce, would have sent all the airlines packing in favor of a foreign entity, the capital flight would be highly enormous. And people are not seeing beyond their noses. Some of us that went to court decided that he who is on the ground has no, fears no fall. Yes, we knew they were going to break our ranks in AON. Some AON members may be bought over to start criticizing their members. We decided, five or four decided, if we want to close our business, close it. But we are never going to be prisoners of our own conscience. We decided to put our names down there, boldly too. What if won't happen tomorrow? Let it happen today. The country belongs to all of us all. That's why five of us went to court. And thank God those that went to court cut across the entire nation. The Manga, Katsina. Uh, of Maxe, Katsina, uh, Asman, Abdulmunav Yunusa, Kano, Ale Noyema, Epis, Anambra, uh, uh, Roland Yai, Edo, Tobras, Okonkwo, Anambra. So you have at least five air airlines representing the entire country, every geopolitical for, uh, division. So it's no longer, it was difficult for anybody to play the ethnic cards. Not minding that AON in our AGM, every speaker after speaker, not even one, <clears throat> said no. In that meeting, I didn't talk. The president said two of us should not talk. Let them contribute. Speaker after speaker condemned because they saw the business case that was establishing the airline. All of them. Not even a single one, even the ones that went to court to say they are not part of it. They even led the gauntlet. And you see, people don't like people who tell them the truth. Some people will go behind and say, we are not part of them. All of them, no single airline had a divergent view. They all said, seek National Assembly, seek presidency. If that fails, go to court. And we went to all three. We went to the presidency. We went to the, uh, we are blocked. We went to the National Assembly, had sessions at the National Assembly, and nothing worked. Had sessions with even the minister, nothing worked. And we went to court. It is our right to so do. It is our right, and we have no apologies to anybody. And the court orders are still subsisting. And the Ethiopia came here when the orders of are subsisting because they're desperate. Let me tell you, Ethiopia doesn't want any Nigerian airline to succeed. Because the success of Nigerian airlines on the international arena will mean the summation of their business. But we don't have apology. This is our country. What 
dream with national career was what they wanted to do with me. For love of this country, I turned it down. How many of the airlines in this country, how many businessmen in this country would do what I did? So you can imagine my pain if a citizen of the country refused to change his country in obedience to the call to serve your country diligently, to put your country first. I rejected that. The letter is there, April 10, 2019. I refuse to be paid royalties for them to come in and fly all over the world using APs from this nation. And when I told them, they told me, I said, but government will not support this kind of thing. They said, forget the, everything. I said, in that case, I am not doing. I told Ulua uh, uh, Alajide, I said, Toyin, in the meeting, we need to put this thing in writing for posterity. I am not going to accept any royalty. And we put it in writing. That, that document is in court. It's in court today. Tell me which, how many people will do that in this country? So tell me how, tell, you, know, you know my pains. If I could reject to be given millions of dollars as a citizen of this country, and now it's the government that is going to bring the same people to do the same thing I rejected. Tell me if I'm being encouraged to remain the way I am. Nobody will. Nobody will. Some people are already blaming me. I like you should have accepted it. That this country, but I don't believe this country must be well. It must be well. The national career thing should be disbanded with immediate effect by the federal government. Nigerians can fly their own flag carriers. Let me tell you something. I'm not afraid of national career. What I hate, it was a situation where the economy of my country will be tampered with or compromised in whatever reason. That is the only thing we are against. We are, let me tell you, the banks will take a hit if we had allowed them to do what they wanted to do. A situation where they wanted to do predatory pricing because they will give them 15 years tax, they will give them this, they will give them that, by affording them to now come and cut costs. If uh, a ticket uh, sits, uh, is costing 50,000, they charge 15,000 naira, the other airlines will die. When they die, Amcon should be ready to take more, more problems. Nobody is thinking about that. They tell you, oh, it's very, it's very important for Nigeria to have an airline of their own. It's a lie. It is a big lie. Many countries don't go that route anymore. They tell you, oh, Ethiopia succeeded. Yes, they succeeded because they are using countries like Nigeria over the years. Why are they desperate? Why are they desperate? They go to Mozambique. They go to Togo. Look at all the places they go to. All the places are leased to those countries. They are not bringing a penny. Ethiopia should tell us how much they are bringing. No penny. It was only, may God bless Dr. Taiwa Falabi of Sako. That man saved this country too. If he had signed all those papers, there would have been serious problems. But Dr. Falabi refused. Falabi was to bring money. Ethiopia was to bring lease their own plane, but they said they'll be the ones paying the lease. So they'll be the ones paying themselves. What kind of arrangement is that? Yes. I'm not against them floating any airline, but let them not call it national carrier because there's nothing national about that airline. They can call it Nigerian Air, no problem. Oh, you can go with the name Nigeria, no problem. But let them, the promoters, form it on their own. And Ethiopia wants to come to Nigeria, they should bring money into the coffers. Um, Qatar went to Rwanda and took 49% of Rwanda and put into Rwanda. $1.2 billion cash injected it there. Here, these guys are bringing nothing. Meanwhile, Epis has ordered 10 Max 10, 13 E2s. So look at how much we have invested. It's running into hundreds of millions of dollars. And you relegate me to two counters somewhere. And you bring somebody bringing this plan and you give him all the largesse of your country. It will not happen. So supporting Nigerian airlines to be stronger, the airport infrastructure must be improved too. Some government officials, they say Nigerian airlines, uh, they are not uh, flying international. Look at Ethiopia. 
Ethiopia will bring people to their country. From there, they go to other places. They go to, thank God, the two, the present uh, MD of Fan is here. The past one is here. Air peace. We are still discussing with them, but it's taking a long time. The Nigerian airport does not have a transiting place. Even the national carrier, assuming that fast, succeed. Where will you operate from? When they say, oh, we fly every part of the world, we drop, you collect passengers, oh, the geographical position of Nigeria makes it the very best, the, the best for uh, 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 the African hub for transiting. Transiting from where? Which airport? Which airport? You don't, we don't have the infrastructure for transiting. We wanted to do it. We needed to go and start schooling customs and immigration. How to do it? The, the farm people also, we needed to start telling them, we applied. I can produce the papers. We applied. But the infrastructure does not support it. You don't really have it where you can bring a large number of people. Where would they sit? Go to the airport. Where would they be? Immigration and uh, customs, they would tell you, uh, we've not uh, provided for that yet. So why are we now blaming the airlines for not doing these things? Put everything right and see the airlines succeed. That's the only time you can really assess this. Uh, I mean, assess the airlines rightly. If you have everything working for them. That's the only time you can assess them. So nothing like transiting. We don't have the transiting infrastructure in Nigeria. We don't. You all go to the airport. Tell me where. Are you going to do it? Remember, Satin is coming. The single African air transport market is coming. And we believe also that this Satin, those who push for it, might also be thinking about Nigeria to feast on Nigeria. These African countries, are not ready to play fair. They're not ready at all. They're not ready. That Epis is flying some of these African countries today is because I have decided on my own that I will seek the intervention of the Nigerian courts. And when they get information that I, I maybe I find something in the court to stop their own airline from, especially those, especially those that have airlines. I'll go to the court to stop them at the Fry High Court. They will now start calling us uh, to come. I mean, that is that is not good. Must I be left on my own to go and do that? But I must give it to Musa Nuhu. He has been fighting. Each time he will bring anything to his notice, he takes it up immediately. Immediately. So we need government support in doing that. And the certain, if Nigerian airlines are not well, uh, fully supported. Whenever they kick, kick off with a certain, we become the losers. I needed to speak on that because it's very, very important. I'm talking about other uh, reforms, the kind of taxes uh, we pay as airlines. I remember Dr. Akim Umi of uh, African Development Bank saying that aviation in Africa, the cost of flying is very, very expensive in Africa. I'm sure he was also talking about uh, the connectivity between African nations, very, very expensive because of taxes when compared to uh, other parts of the world. Uh, here in Nigeria, the airlines are not even charging enough compared to the, the cost of uh, operations. At the end of the day, about 40% of our ticket fares go to one charge or one tax. What is left for the airline is, is, uh, is nothing. You already know this. When it comes to financing, that's another reform. We cannot be talking about aviation. All over the world, aviation is supported. The American government, after COVID, released billions of dollars to their airlines. Every country released billions of dollars to their airlines. Nigerian Airlines, we are giving only $4 billion for over 30-something airlines. $4 billion Naira. Some got, uh, got 800,000 Naira. I'm not joking. So I've got 3 million Naira. So fine, if we don't have money, that is one thing. If we don't have, fine, we don't have. But don't condemn these airlines 
for something they didn't create, then you are now about to create that ease of doing business for a foreign entity, and you call it your national airline. Neglecting those who have been toiling day and night for the nation. He has posted over 30 years in aviation. I think I'm about one of the young guests. What are you doing to the psyche of those other airlines that have existed before us? So when we talk about uh, uh, reforms, make loans available to the airlines at very little uh, interest rates, and they will blow that, make it easily accessible too, like in other climbs. I have loans. I'm swimming in loans. Some of my loans I took at 26%. 26%. When I tell foreigners this, they say, no, it's a lie. I have loans. Some are 26%, some are 23%, 24%. At the time I got at 13%, it was short lived. The thing now went up again. Nobody does that. So if you want the airlines to blossom, allow them to access finance at a rate that, that is affordable and at the same time reasonable, not what is happening now. Then, of course, we talk about local production of Jet A1. What you buy fuel in the morning is not what you buy it in the evening. The thing fluctuates. Some people said, oh, airlines, you should hedge. <laughs> Me, I've hedged before. At the end of the day, the person couldn't even give me fuel. He used the money. So there are things we, 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 we go through. Yes, I hedged in 2016. I paid off front. When it was time to supply me, the person was not supplying me. And uh, I realized the person was supplying Eric. I went to the person. I said, I gave you money to give me to, I, I gave you money up front. Your business was down. I gave you this money up front. He said uh, one airline was owing him before. And the man said, if you don't be giving me fuel, I won't pay that my debt. Therefore, he placed him as his priority. Then my money gone. I'm talking about hundreds of millions of Naira as far back as 2016. So when we blame these airlines, you don't know, you don't have a clue what we go through. The only solution to the jet air one issue is local production that will bring down the price for now we are buying fuel at 800 and when you look at it one hour flight on a boeing 737 we take about 3650 liters in one hour to abuja multiply that by 850 naira you see what you get you at the end of the day uh, you're spent how many people are you carrying you're spending almost five million already already so how would any Nigerian airline blossom in this kind of thing? How about Forex? Same thing. To even see the foreign exchange is a problem. Everything you do on the aircraft is dollarized. Everything is dollar, dollar, foreign exchange. Uh, apart from the food, we, we, the catering we give, every other thing is about dollar. We don't even see it to buy. Sometimes the foreign vendors try to blackmail you also. Because you fail to make payments as when do you lodge money with the central bank? I have money with the central bank now. <coughs> Excuse me. They will give you forward date for payment. The date will come. They still don't redeem it. Meanwhile, you know your money is already there. Double jeopardy. You don't have your naira again with you. The central bank, you're not getting a dollar from central bank, and the one you, you have already taken from you. What do we do? What do we do? So, these are the thank you. These are the issues we face. Let us go and bring the best of the airlines in the world, bring them into Nigeria. Don't give them any special support, allow them to operate under the same conditions. The Nigerian airlines operate, they will not last 72 hours. They will not last 72 hours. So these local indigenous operators are doing a lot for the country. 
customs clearance. That should be expedited. Uh, Roland Yayi the other day suggested to AON that uh, we should parley with customs so that they have aviation desk. Customs agreed. The leadership of customs agreed. I think that's a, a good thing from, they are disposed to doing that with us, you know, establishing an aviation desk where some of their members are trained specifically to deal with airlines. Because the way it is for now, they don't even understand which one is AOG. Your spare part might come and might remain there for three weeks. In other climbs, once any spare part is being brought in under AOG regime, you take it away immediately and come and settle later. Because the aircraft is treated like a human being, it needs to fly. Over here, it's not the same thing. So we need, we need to expedite clearance of spares or aircraft from custom. The ease of doing business must, should be improved. It's not just there, not only with customs, everywhere. I don't want to bore you so much, but remember, part of the problems we are having is the lack of maintenance, repair, and overhaul facility, MRO. As I speak to you now, I'm sure I have about maybe eight aircraft abroad. And these are costing millions of dollars. Even to, like uh, Senator Adede said, to ferry those planes abroad is a lot of money already. So the Nigerian airline is destined to fail from beginning. You're dead on arrival because there are so many things against you. You don't have MROs that could take care of maintenance. And I thought anybody could have thought that the best thing to do was maybe government to channel its energy towards having MRO. I don't believe in government doing business, but government can provide the enabling environment for people of means to come and do business. So even the MRO, I don't even believe that government should set up MRO because it will fail, anything government fails anywhere in the world. All they need to do is to provide the enabling environment and people will blossom. We are talking about airlines. We still maintain our planes under the sun, under the rain, under, under, under bad weather. I applied to FAN in 2015 for land. It took time. I think I paid over 100 million. As I speak to you, I cannot really say I've received the land for hunger. So it's very, very painful bureaucracy. The one they gave us before, maybe it was for private jets. The thoroughfare to go into it, the wingspan of a 737 would not even go in. And that was what they gave us. So we started making problems, uh, writing, writing the heaps of letters like this. The former person, they took several years before Captain Yadudu came on board. It was when he came on board that they now relocated us and got, got us a place. Okay, you have a triple seven. We wanted to buy something that would also accommodate the triple seven, the maintenance of the triple seven. So they now gave us another place. We had to pay more for that place. As I speak to you, the certain departments there, you come to there, they tell you this up. As I speak to you, we've not taken position. And in 2005 to now, uh, 2015 to now, you, you can understand what we are going through. So some of these things are not good, and they must be said. Bureaucracy is so much. You have people who are willing. Then some departments will forestall whatever you want to do. You don't even know. Even at a time, they said um, we should bring um, BG, bank guarantee. You see, you keep on making things very expensive for the operator. Bank guarantee for the land you've already paid. And the land they gave it to us for 15 years only. So I'll come and sink in billions for 15 years. So we started another round of negotiation before Captain Yadudu got into the fray and said no and increased it. This is the issue. How could, how do you now grow as a Nigerian airline? Because I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to even establish that MRO, not just a hangar for maintaining a piece. I'm ready to grow it into an MRO. What does it take to do that? You get foreign technical partners and put them, they get everything going. 
We need people. There are people who are willing to do this in Nigeria. Nigeria is not Togo. Nigeria is not Mozambique. Nigeria is not Malawi or some banana republics. We have business people in this country that can afford to do whatever they want to do. All they need is the ease of doing business is dead in this country. And we, this government should address that. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.